episode 67 of the Pins and Needles podcast. My name is Zoe. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Pins and Needles UK. Um, and if you check the drop down box below, you will find links to all my places and my email address and all of that kind of thing. Um, I hope you enjoy my lovely flowers. Um, I've had a bit of a week this last week and um, so I treated myself to a bunch and you've got lovely stargazer lilies and some pink roses and um, ornamental brassicas. I don't know if you can quite see them. <laughs> Basically pretty cabbages. And I thought you might like to share some of those with me today. Um, oh, one quick ad mini thing. I have now um, put my patterns up on Payhip. I know that there are lots of people who can't use Ravelry and I wanted another platform to be able to sell my patterns from. So I'm now available through my Ravelry designer store my Payhip store and any of the patterns I've designed for Cartrev yarn are also available from the Cartrev website and again there's links to all of those down below. And I also wanted to let you know that um, we've set up or rather Jenny has set up a Mighty Networks group for the Knit Tea Retreat on um, yeah, mightynetworks.com Again, links down below. The retreat group is a private group, but all you need to do is sign up and request to join. Um, I'm not terribly familiar with it, but it's a, it's a similar sort of post with comments and share photos and updates and news on there. So we will start using that as well as the Facebook group and the Ravelry group. So there's another opportunity for you to join in all of our fun. Also, I've finally been able to wear my finished cosy classic raglan because autumn has finally arrived in South Wales, thank goodness. We've had a couple of unseasonably warm days, but generally speaking, it's grey and rainy and cool, which is absolutely lovely. For anyone that's been watching a while, I finished knitting this in the peak of the heat wave in August, <laughs> which was perfect for blocking it and not so much for um, wearing it. So yeah. Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Made Designs in Rowan Kid Silk Haze, held double with some posh yarn um, in the colourway Somebody Needs Their Nap, and it was in Merino Cashmere Nylon. Super snuggly, really nice and warm, and very happy to be able to be wearing it. Okay, let's get on with some finished objects which I actually have quite a few of. Well, two, three, two or three. <laughs> the first of which is in this beautiful project bag. It's like oil slick with gold swirls on it. And this was um, in my uh, Ravelry group Christmas advent calendar swap. And um, it's got a beautiful spotty purple lining and I absolutely love the bag. So I've been knitting hats recently and this was my hat knitting bag. If there's any slightly unfortunate munchy noises, that's because Jim the dog is down there enjoying his bone. I cooked a nice joint of roast beef on the weekend and um, it was rib, so he's got the ribs. Okie dokie, first up, I need to scroll down on my laptop because otherwise I can't remember the names of anything. Hmm. Um, I started a bit of Christmas knitting because otherwise it all comes on you in a bit of a rush, doesn't it? And it's a bit of a panic. And I have knit the March hat by Megan Babin in some of the worsted yarn that I received as part of my Knit Crate Ambassador scheme. So the yarn is Knitology Worsted Merino. It's the one that was in conjunction with Brooklyn Boy Knits. And it's 100% superwash merino worsted weight in the colorway Empire. Um, so this is for my youngest boy, Max. He's currently 13. And it's just a super squishy beanie hat. Um, with a nice knit pearl texture pattern. It's a free pattern and I quite like how the yarn has sort of flashed in four segments around it. Um, it's a nice one by one rib. Um, he likes a little bit of slouch. Um, I haven't blocked it 
um, but I'll see I can always block it a bit harder if he needs me to um, and I have that much of the yarn left so I think I, I knit this in about a week flat and it's really nice and squishy and warm so I'm going to tuck that away for Christmas so it's nice to have something ready to go that you don't need to worry about and then I also knit a hat for Dave for Christmas if you remember I knit the Shire Stones hat by Mina Phillip which is a paid for pattern um, I knit a hat for me out of some um, yarn that was given to me by Kathy who is Shake Your Booties and it was just a really nice close fitting beanie with a doubled brim and I need um, several hats for winter because like, they get so wet when I'm out walking the dog it's always nice to have a couple so you can have one to dry for 24 hours before you need to head back out. Another simple knit pearl texture and I knitted this hat in some reclaimed grey alpaca DK yarn um, ages ago a friend of mine knitted a jumper out of it and didn't think the jumper suited her so she passed it on to me and it didn't suit me either but the yarn was lovely so I unravelled it. The pattern does suggest that you have a doubled up brim so you would turn it to the inside and either whip stitch it down which is what I did to my original version or you can do a provisional cast on and knit it together with the last row. Um, I wasn't sure quite on the length of the hat for Dave so I thought well I'll leave it un undoubled um, and then if he needs the extra bit of length he can have it and if he'd rather have the double brim. Um, I find it's much less faff to just whip stitch the brim down so I'd literally just fold it in half and tack it down along that bottom edge there. So that's two hats into the Christmas box, which is quite good. I've got plenty more of this grey yarn left, um, so I could always do matching mitts if he wants a pair of those. On to my knitting works in progress. Um, I have, well, I have got another finished object, but I can't show you. You'll have to wait to hear about that. Um, I was putting the finishing touches to the Knit Tea Retreat um, free pattern. Jenny and I always include a pattern in the um, like the booklet for the attendees. And um, it was my turn to design something, so I was finishing that off. Um, so the attendees will get it for free in their booklet. I will also release it to everybody as a paid for pattern. Um, through Ravelry and pay hit, but obviously I can't show you yet because I don't want to spoil any surprises. Um, I've got a test knit running for that at the moment and because I am a bear of very little brain at the moment, um, I'm just busy working away on my vanilla socks. And I have a finished sock. This is sort of a little bit um, acquisitions as well. I treated myself, let me get all my gubbins out, to a ball of this year's West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas yarn. And this is the colorway Silent Night. And it is a beautiful tonal yarn with actually quite a lot of sparkle in it. It's their signature four ply. Yeah, in the colorway Silent Night. And it's 75% wool, 23% nylon, 2% polyester, and 35% of the 75% that is wool is, is BFL. Uh, yes, yeah, so I finished the first sock um, and same as the last sock that I showed you last week. Jim! 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 Oi! Enough with the munching. You're very loud. Uh, yes, yeah, same as the last finished pair of socks I showed you last time. This is my as requested vanilla sock pattern. 2x2 two two rib, heel flap and gusset um, and again I did a rounded toe so you get sort of not quite micro stripes but just a lovely variegated yarn. Um, I don't know if I picked it up to show you, it's the 
the yarn does come with a free pattern, a lace sock pattern. Is it Comet Sock or something? I can't remember, but it's designed by Winnick Mum. And it came in a nice, beautifully printed sort of leaflet with the yarn. Um, but there's no point knitting a lace pattern in this yarn. It's completely obscured. I'd seen a few people having a go at it on Instagram and you can't see the lace whatsoever. So I, I didn't even bother and I just knit a very nice plain vanilla sock. And I have been zooming along on sock number two. And that's how far I've got. I just finished the um, gusset decreases this morning. It's Monday, the 12th of October, and I really ought to be at work. Um, but I had my flu jab last week, and um, I really don't feel terribly great. I didn't over the weekend, and I felt disgusting this morning, so Dave was very kind and sent me back to bed. <laughs> so he's probably having quite a busy day at work without me on the desk. Um, another finished object I've got to show you, but it's spinning, not knitting. I have finally plied up that 100 gram skein of Polworth fibre that I bought from Jenny. Um, if you remember, I've been working on it for a while and it was the summer knit tea retreat special colourway called Knitting with Friends. I was aiming for a DK weight in a traditional three ply. Left to my own devices without concentrating, I will spin fine enough for a chain ply fingering weight yarn. So I made sure to do a bit of sampling and keep checking my singles with my spinner's control card. Um, and I couldn't fit all of it onto one bobbin at the end. Um, but I've ended up with 221.8 meters um, in 97 grams. There's one one of the singles is left on the bobbins. I meant to show it to you, but I forgot. Um, 
So yeah, 220 grams basically out of 100, 220 meters out of 100 grams is pretty much DK weight. Um, I've caked one up already because Jocelyn asked me very nicely if she could have some fingerless mitts with a flap um, knitted out of this. And that's what it looks like in the skein. And I'm really pleased with it. I don't know if you can see in here, there's a ring of lilac and I spun two of the singles top to bottom and the third single bottom to top in an attempt to try and avoid the same colour bits of yarn coming together. Excuse me. And I was almost completely successful apart from probably 10 metres or so of three lilacs all overlapping and producing a knot. Um, multicoloured barber pole yarn but all the rest has come up beautifully I particularly like the dark pink and the light pink it's really beautiful and if I undo this little skein hopefully you can see a bit better is that focusing yes or you can just see a bit of where all the purple came together here but overall I'm absolutely thrilled with it. When I'd first plied it up and skeined it, I didn't think I'd managed to hit DK weight. I thought I'd ended up with a sport weight, um, but it really floofed up. When I washed it um, and then dried it, it poofed up loads. I have spun Polworth before, um, but only once, so I didn't particularly remember how it had behaved, but there are bits that are a little thinner. There are probably some sport weight bits in here for sure. But overall, I'm really pleased with it. So this is going to be next on my needles. Um, there's a pattern, uh, Chili Podsters by Glenacy, I think it might be, because she wants fingerless mitts but with individual finger nubbins and a flap over the top. Um, and it's a stocking stitch pattern and there's a... There's the podsters mitts, which is for four ply, and then there's the chili podsters, which is DK weight, which I have knitted for Dave previously. They're just up there in the hall cubbies. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for that. Um, and once I've finished working out an error on my test knit, <laughs> I should have some brain space for mitts for Jocelyn. That will be next on my list. I do actually have some sewing to share with you. I recorded some little snippety bits of my sewing product as I went along, so I will put them in for you here and then come back to show you the finished object. I'm making Dave a dressing gown. Um, it's Tuesday, no, it's Wednesday the 7th of October and Dave's 50th birthday was yesterday. Um, he's been jealous of my purple sheepy dressing gown. If you watch the podcast, you'll have seen it many times. Uh, and that was something that I sewed up myself a good few years ago. Um, and yeah, Dave has always been jealous. So I thought that for his 50th, I'd make him his own. So that's what I'm in the process of doing today. The pattern I'm using is a simplicity pattern, easy to sew, and it's pattern 5931. There it is. And it includes um, children's and teens as well. So it's it's the whole family. Um, it's a very simple shape. So you can see it's got a, a grown on shawl collar. The back is in one piece. Um, super simple. Now the largest chest size um, is 46 to 48 inches. And obviously, um, my husband's chest is bigger than that because he does huge amounts of weight training. I think Dave's chest is currently 50 inches. Um, but the finished pattern measurements, the actual garment measurements, are printed on the fabric tissue themselves. That's that bit here. So the XL size to fit a 48 inch chest, um, the finished bust measurement will be 60.5 inches, which means he'll still have 10 inches of positive ease and it's a double wrap. 
So I was dithering about whether to trace the pattern off and make it even bigger because it's such a simple shape it wouldn't be hard to do but I think what I've gone for in the end is um, I'll tuzzle you around now I will just by eye cut half an inch bigger pattern pieces all the way around which will give me an extra two inches um, of finished chest circumference um, in terms of other alterations, all I've done is I've cut and spread the pattern and put an extra inch in. Um, this, this pattern piece is the front and under collar. So if you see at the top, this bit it, it forms part of the collar. So I've, it didn't have any lengthen or shorten lines on the pattern. So I chose to cut at this point, which is when it straightens off for the front Edge, I suppose of the robe so you've got the curve here for the short collar and then once it straightens out I've just cut and spread um, and I want to add some extra length on it as well but again um, because it's the, the bottom edge is straight obviously all I'm going to do is when I get down to that end just use pins to mark off an extra inch for the hem and cut straight across that I'm just at the point of laying all the fabric out on the table, so I'll swivel you round and show you now. Here it is all laid out. And this fabric is right sides together, but as you can see, it's skull and crossbones fabric. It's clearer print on the other side. Um, I haven't traced this off. I do usually trace off patterns. But because I'm running a bit late anyway, because my fabric took a little while longer to arrive than I planned, um, I'm just going to go for it. And because I'm also cutting him the largest size, as you can see, all the other pattern lines fall within it. So if I cut half an inch outside the pattern lines, I'm still going to have my original pattern intact as well, which is probably just as well because Jocelyn has asked for a frog dressing gown for Christmas because she saw this. Here you can see where I've added that extra inch as well, because obviously if you add an inch on one pattern piece, you've got to make sure you add it in all the way around. I've pinned this one down already. This has to go right pattern right side down. And I've used my quilting pins. Obviously the pattern um, calls for you to cut some pieces on the fold and that makes it extra thick because it's polar fleece. So I've used my quilting pins because they are that much longer um and yeah and i've just got the rest of the fabric draped over the dining room chair at the end so i'm going to pin down that front facing piece and start cutting out i think dressing gown it is very warm and I like it thank you very much now I'm glad I thought to get to record a bit of footage with Dave wearing it because he has already thrown gravy down the front of it <laughs> it was Dave's 50th birthday on Tuesday and one of the things I wanted to do was make him a dressing gown because he's been after one for a while so here is the finished dressing gown can you even see me it's very busy fabric. So it's got a, a shawl collar and it's polar fleece that I bought from Minerva Fabrics and I linked directly to the website down below. It's £7.99 a metre and um, plus postage, of course. Um, 
there's a close-up of the fabric and I'm really pleased with how it came out and so is Dave. I'm not sure how much he'll actually wear it because he's um, a very hot person <laughs> but I finished it at least. Yes, you can just see the gravy down here. Um, I did make a bit of a pig's ear of the pockets. The pockets are the first thing you sew um, and you sew them onto the front pieces before you do anything else and they're just... Oh, you can't see it. I don't know why I'm showing you. Um, they're just a little bit wonky. It's while I was getting used to the machine and I decided to swap over to my walking foot um, for sewing most of it. So the pockets are a little wonky, but that's okay. I think I bought the pattern with me, actually. Let me just rearrange things. That can go on there. The only problem I had, apart from sewing black fleece fabric when the light bulb on my sewing machine died, was when I was attaching the front to the back at the shoulders and back neck edge. Yeah. So it's diagram 10, it's this stage here. So the shoulders lined up beautifully, that's not a problem. The, the neck line curve of the back piece is curved. You can see it here. But this bit that you're matching here is actually a square like that. So you are literally trying to get a square peg into a round hole. <laughs> and I nearly lost my mind with it. Yeah, so what you're doing is attaching pieces one and three together. And as you can see, piece three, which is the back, has that round top to it. And when you've sewn these two pieces together, this makes a square. So there was much cursing and I didn't do the best job on it, but it is finished. Um, and it fits and he likes it, as you can see from the tremendous modelling that he did for me. So... Sometimes good enough is good enough. I did also have a little bit of a tuck in one of the back pieces, again, just because I was trying to bodge it all to fit. But it's such a lovely soft material. It's not, you can't sort of feel it when it's on. So I decided that was sufficient. Um, ooh, acquisitions. A um, couple of acquisitions for you. When I was buying Christmas sock yarn, by the way, I bought the Silent Night West Yorkshire Spinners and my other acquisition from Angela of Yarn and Yarns, who I'm sure you all know and love. Um, but her, she used to run my local yarn store, but now she's gone online. Um, so I've been buying yarn from Angela. The other skein of yarn I bought was this, which is also West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply. And this is a previous Christmas colourway called Hollyberry. And I plan on um, knitting myself a pair of Christmas socks for this. I've got some leftovers, same yarn, but it's a plain solid red. I can't remember the name of it. it might be cinnamon or something like that, but it's one of the suggested colourways to go with it. So I think I will do contrast cuffs, heels and toes and make myself a nice cheery pair of Christmas socks. They probably will be stocking stitch again, just because the yarn looks so lovely worked up. But that's, um, that's something to look forward to. Maybe that'll be my Christmas Eve cast on. Or is it too late to start knitting Christmas socks? Jim, Jim, can you just not make such a noise? Yes, you. I've got my camera on a tripod. I wonder if I can just swivel it round to show you. There he is, Jim. 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 I'm talking to the people on my camera. I don't think he cares, do you? Oh well, back to me and the flowers. <laughs> uh, acquisitions. Um, the other, act well I've got a couple of other acquisitions. And the first one is this rather lovely book. It's called The Power of Knitting. Stitching Together Our Lives in a Fractured World, and it's written by Loretta Napoleoni. There it is. And it's published by Tarcha Perigee Press. And on the back it says, 
20 US dollars or 26 Canadian dollars. And I had a random, random email from the author's assistant or from the publishing house, I can't quite remember, asking if they could send me a copy of the book to for free to review on my podcast. And I said, yes, thank you. That would be lovely. I haven't read it yet. I'm in the final throes of Terry Pratchett's Monstrous Regiment, which a client has lent me and I'm loving. But this is next on my pile of books to read. It, I have to say, it looks lovely. It's a hardback copy and it's got really lovely quality paper with it. Um, some beautiful little illustrations, can you see? Really sweet illustrations and, and yeah, nice, nice paper. Um, and on the back it says, Pearl and Stitch, how knitting empowers, heals and reconnects us to one another and ourselves. Whether we're facing anxiety, loneliness or uncertain times, knitting is a powerful tool for survival and a metaphor for life. Join economist and lifelong knitter Loretta Napoleoni on a voyage through history, following the yarn of social, economic and political changes and a personal journey of discovery as well, purling and stitching every step of the way in this remarkable exploration of the power of knitting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this and the chapters include Why Do We Knit? Knitting for the Revolution, feminine, Feminism's Love-Hate Relationship with Yarn, Knitting in the Age of Neuroscience, um, and there's some patterns in here as well. And I just spotted on Instagram while I was checking something for my show notes that she is doing a live Instagram book launch at 8am GMT on the 11th of October, along with knit designer at Folk Earth Knits. So I will read this. I don't know if I will have finished it by the next time we speak, but I will certainly give it a make a good start on it and let you know what I think. Um, but it looks like a really nice book. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm going to use it as an excuse to sit down and drink lots of tea. My last acquisition, um, ooh, last but one, my last specifically yarn related acquisition is the August Knit Crate. I don't know what's going on with the US Postal Service at the moment, but my Lord, my yarn boxes are taking their time to get to me. And um, so I got this, I think maybe a week or 10 days ago, and it's the August subscription box. So yeah um just a quick reminder they send me this yarn for free in return for sharing it with you guys on my social media they don't dictate that i say nice things about it my opinions are my own um, but if you check the link down below you will see the details of the affiliate scheme um, and you can get a discount if you sign up using my link anyway the august yarn arrived and it's two beautiful skeins of Ordine Wools by Knit Crate Sleek. That's a pretty good colour representation. Absolutely beautiful. Really, I mean, if you remember that this is August yarn, so it's like summer brights colours. Really nice. Um, and this is in the colourway Unwind. And it is, let me just read the label. 55% fine merino wool. 30% baby alpaca, 15% mulberry silk, 220 yards for 100 grams. So it's um, DK, or you might call it a light worsted maybe if you are stateside. And again, really lovely. It's got that slight sheen from the silk, um, beautifully soft. I mean, extra fine merino, alpaca and silk is gorgeous. Um, I have no plans for this yet. I wondered if Jocelyn might like something out of it because green is her favourite colour. So I'm considering, but it may well end up in the prize pile for the Knit Tea Retreat. So yeah, there's that. Um, it did also come with a glow-in-the-dark heart-shaped stitch marker, um, which I've given to Jocelyn and is now decorating her phone. Um, and you always get this little magazine of patterns with it. Um, and this year, all of the Knit Crate boxes are in collaboration with various dyers and designers. And this month's August was 
done in collaboration with Maya Luna Corazon, who is a crochet designer. And isn't that a lovely picture? Look, she looks like really good fun. So yeah, there you go. So that's my, my last Yarny acquisition. Much rummaging. Oh, I lied. There isn't, well, this is another acquisition. Normally, I drink tea when I talk to you. But last year, Ribena, which is a British squash, like fruit cordial brand, um, launched Ribena Winter Spice, which is mulled um, blackcurrant squash that you know, like Kool Aid, you know, like you dilute it with water, and it's designed to be served hot. Ribena Winter Spice, and they only bring it out in the winter, and. It's actually quite hard to find. Certainly where I live, I really struggle to find it. And there was one um, trip, Jenny and I were going to a yarn show. I can't remember which one. And we stayed um, in Stevenage, not far from London, and popped into the local supermarket to buy our bed picnic. And I spotted this on the shelf and I bought, I think I bought 10 bottles <laughs> because I can't find it really hard to find in South Wales. So ever since it turned September, October, I've been checking the shelves of supermarkets. Um, and if I do like a food shop online, I've been checking as well. And I haven't seen it anywhere. And then Dave got home from work from the gym late one night last week and said, there's a massive box arrived for you. Now between the Nitty Retreat um, and car trove yarn and normal Amazon orders. I get all sorts of unexpected stuff delivered at the gym and it might be cleaning cloths or it might be stuff for the retreat gift bags or it might be packaging or who knows. And uh, he said, it's got Ribena on the box. And I thought, oh my God, I haven't ordered anything. What's, who sent me something in a box? Well, it was Jenny. <laughs> Jenny of Owl About Yarn who runs the retreat and car trev with me. And she found out you can order what you like off the Ribena website and she ordered me a whole crate of Ribena winter spice <laughs> so thank you Jenny that's true love that is so I've got 12 bottles well I've got 11 and a half bottles of Ribena winter spice and I might just order myself another box before winter is over I have included the link down below if anybody else is having Ribena winter spice urges finally on to a last little bit of catch up and chat. Um, I mentioned last week that Cartrev Yarn um, was featured in the Knitter magazine, episode 155, and that they were sending me a copy, but it hadn't arrived. Well, now it has. And I think I've spilled a small amount of tea on the front cover. <laughs> so this is the current edition of the Knitter. Um, I understand from the publisher that it does get published elsewhere in the world. So I know that there's a US uh, branch of the knitter. I think the content can vary, but we did give our permission for them to use our interview and our images overseas. So if you get the knitter wherever you are, maybe have a look. So um, if you turn to the very back, so that's the front cover, there's a whole page on an interview with me and Jenny. Look, there's me and Jenny. Ah, that's us at Wonderwell launching Cartrove Yarn. Um, so yeah, it's just a couple of questions about us. Um, what's the story behind it? Where do we source the yarn? Our proudest achievements, you know, difficulties, highlights and challenges. And yeah, I was absolutely thrilled with this. And it's, it's a short article, it's only one page, but it's so exciting to see us actually in print. I know I probably shouldn't, you know, go on about it, but I'm so thrilled with it. And as well as that little page on the back, we're featured somewhere else, like a yarn review. I probably should have put a sticky label in this, shouldn't I? Where is it? Oh yeah, British Yarns. Explore the beauty and variety of Britain's native sheep breeds with our pick of six special wool yarns. So they've done sort of a double spread and this purple up here, this is us, this is our colourway Coron. They've given us a lovely review and we were alongside Blacker Yarns, Home Farm Wensleydale, 
Garthnor, also Welsh, West Yorkshire Spinners and Iona, which is, you know, they are some fantastic brands that I love and it's very flattering. Um, so yeah, they um, reviewed our four ply yarn and they wrote, um, a wonderful showcase for Welsh wool. This rounded bouncy yarn feels warm and reassuringly woolly with a good handle. It's a four ply weight blend of Welsh mule wool with Welsh blue face duster, which is also processed in Wales. The yarn is kettle dyed in small batches to produce a semi-solid, subtly variegated fabric in a range of rich and appealing colours, which I thought was very nice. So yeah, that's episode 155 of The Knitter and I saved a copy to give to my mum. On to a last little bit of chat. Um, I am a week later podcasting than I had planned, which I'm assuming you're used to by now. <laughs> I do keep trying, but failing. The main thing I've been up to is Dave's 50th birthday. He was 50 on the 6th of October, which was a random Tuesday. Um, and a few people, a few regulars at the gym and the staff members had clubbed together to get him um, a birthday cake and a big card and a bottle of um, dark rum. So I took the kids in, I was at work on Monday, the kids were in school, and I took them back into Cardiff to go and celebrate uh, Monday night at the gym. And then Tuesday was his actual birthday and he had the day off. Uh, I was working till five, scooted back, and then we went out to um, dinner at a steakhouse, which was lovely. I think that Tuesday is the first time Dave had the whole house to himself with no children in it since March. It was just him and Jim the dog and he had a really lovely time. And then because having a birthday in the middle of the week is a bit rubbish, we picked Saturday this weekend just gone as his sort of official family birthday. And I sewed up his dressing gown and I cooked an enormous roast beef and Yorkshire pudding dinner and an apple pie. And we celebrated as a family, which was good. We didn't get to have um, a party or to see his family because we are still in lockdown, which is a shame. Um, but the the work related people he wanted to see most, we did get to see because either they work for us, so we're allowed to see them or they're members of the gym. So they're allowed to come in and train. Um, so we did a sort of socially distant with masks. <laughs> birthday and of course nobody wants to eat cake once you've blown on it these days so we wafted the candle out like that and then everyone had a bit <laughs> so it wasn't quite the same um he was hoping for a big party but obviously that can't be managed what else have we been up to um oh lots of nitty retreat stuff obviously that's getting closer and closer um, it's the 23rd, 4th and 5th of October that weekend that the retreat is happening. So Jenny and I have been busy catching up with the tutors over Zoom, doing last minute arrangements, making sure they're happy and that we've got everything we need to forward on to you guys. And all of the gift bag goodness parcels have headed out into the world. We sent the international parcels last week and I know that they've started to arrive in Europe. Um, there were one or two going to the States. They might not be with you yet, but don't panic. And all of the UK ones, Jenny took to the post office this morning. And there's big stickers on the front saying, don't open it before the retreat weekend. <laughs> but of course, that's up to you. It's not like we'll ever know. So last Saturday, um, Jenny and I were packing all the boxes and poking all the goodies into them. And that was really good fun. What else? Yeah, the test net's going on. Um, I've told you about the Mighty Networks group. There's a link to that down below. And I think that's kind of it. Kids are all doing well back in school, nice and busy with clients at the gym. So most of the knitting I've shown you has been from the first sort of 10 days since we last spoke. My rate of crafting has dropped considerably more recently because last week was quite a week. But I think I've not done too badly. And a bit of sewing to show you, that's all right. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Um, please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe and leave me a comment. 
I'll try and get through as many comments as I can. Sorry again about Jim the dog's awful munching in the background. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed I hope you enjoyed the flowers. All right, look after yourselves and I will see you soon. Bye.